Mohammed, in the last report or briefing you did to the Security Council, you wrote and spoke of, and I quote, a worsening security situation in the entire Sahel. And you elaborated and spoke about banditism, terrorism, intercommunal violence. You also mentioned some progress on the governance side, democracy building, but basically you concentrated on the worsening security situation pointing to Mali and uh, Burkina Faso uh, particularly. So my question to you is, could you give us a little bit more detail on the specific kind and the magnitude of the security challenges in that region and also try to tell us what organizations like the G5 Sahel or Barkhan or uh, the UN mission in Mali actually can do? Please, Mark. Well, there are two uh, areas to keep in mind here. First of all, the Sahel, and then the Lake Chad Basin area, uh, which are facing specific threats from terrorists and violent extremism. Uh, in the Sahel, the result of the situation and the activities of a terrorist group in north of uh, Mali, which has descended to central Mali, uh, and now is spilling over into Burkina Faso and Niger. We are indeed witnessing what uh, we have characterized as this deterioration in the security situation uh, in the uh, Sahel region. And, um, Evidence of it is the uh, almost now daily attacks mm. by terrorist groups in Mali, of course, particularly in central Mali, which has also triggered intercommunal conflicts because of the skillful manner in which the terrorist groups have influenced, inf infiltrated certain uh, communities. Uh, uh, leading to an unfortunate characterization of the entire community as supporting terrorism and therefore uh, the kind of attacks that we see, very unfortunate attacks that we see, for instance, in Mali between the Pearl community and the Dagon. Uh, and then, of course, this has flowed over uh, into initially into Niger, in west of Niger, in the provinces of Tilabere and Taya, uh, which also are more and more witnessing the presence, the very active presence of these terrorist groups. Recently, and this has caused the entire region to wake up to this challenge, we have also seen uh, in the Sahel the phenomena of terrorism descending into Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso, which otherwise has been seen as a fairly stable, strong country, sort of a buffer between the Sahel and the coastal state, is uh, indeed uh, descending into mm -hmm. this uh, instability, uh, regular attacks while we were here. Uh, two days ago, there was an attack near Father Gruma, which has come pretty south, because this is one of the bigger uh, cities, towns in Burkina Faso, a little bit outside of the Sum and Sahel region, and uh, it's a crossroad uh, city linking uh, many of the countries such as uh, Benin, Togo, Ghana, um, and in fact uh, a major regional highway into Niger. So when cities like that come under threat, uh, then you see that this phenomena is expanding. So in general, that is a threat in the Sahel, but then in, and, and this particularly linked to terrorist groups which have been known to exist in uh, north of Mali and have declared and do have links with international terrorist groups, Al-Qaeda, Islamic State, etc. Now in the Lake Chad Basin, it's a slightly different story. You could talk of a homegrown terrorist group, mm -hmm. which Boko Haram uh, is, uh, having come out of uh, Bornus uh, in northeast, uh, Borno State in northeast of Nigeria, and initially affecting six 
uh, northeastern states of Nigeria, and then spreading into Cameroon, into Chad, and into Niger, for instance, south of Niger in Bifa County. Um, and uh, although it was seen as maybe perhaps just a fluke, it has shown resilience. Uh, in, the, in the campaign that brought current President uh, Buhari into power, uh, his strength and I think the perception that he succeeded in given was that being a former military man and you know, rather tough uh, reputation from those days of uh, military governments uh, in, in West Africa, uh, that he would take on and defeat you know, Boko Haram. Um, Boko Haram recently celebrated his 10th anniversary, and that more or less in the fifth year of the government of President Buhari. So it hasn't been that easy to fully contain Boko Haram. It remains effective in Borno State. I should say that progress has definitely been made because before it was at least six states in Northeast that were threatened. Today, uh, it's re Boko Haram's influence and effectiveness reduced to Borno State. So that's definitely progress. And um, certainly even in Cameroon, in Chad, we have seen that there has, uh, their influence or their effectiveness there have been reduced and it's reduced to just predatory attacks on communities, on villages, etc. The response of the region has been in both cases. On the one hand, the creation of the JSTN Sahel uh, as, as a community of countries facing this existential threat from terrorists, violent extremists in the Sahel. And they have uh, been able to organize, to, to seek to address the phenomena in a comprehensive way, more or less along the lines of what the UN advocates, that it should be a total approach, mm. not just a security approach, but also address root causes. That means address uh, the poverty and sometimes the exclusion and what uh, Professor Robert Dosso has talked about, the governance deficit, that in, in some of these countries, because the territories are so huge, whether you take Mali or Niger or Chad, and, and the government itself, the question of state capacity is so limited, uh, its presence has not been felt uh, in some communities. And then, let's face it, there has been clearly some discrimination and negligence and just not the right attitude of some, some communities in the past. Uh, so all of these need to be atta attacked at the same time as we seek to address the poverty and the uh, lack of uh, basic socioeconomic infrastructure of schools, of education, uh, providing for women and youth, uh, particularly generating youth and employment. So the JSNX Sahel has this comprehensive approach. In addition to seeking to stand up a force to fight uh, against terrorism and which force, of course, the uh, UN position has been very clear, especially Secretary General and uh, all his adv advisors have recommended that this needs the support of Security Council. Um, and so we still hope that Security Council will come around to uh, authorize, you know, a, a support, direct support to this force. Um, and very quickly, if we shift back to Lake Chad Basin countries, they have also made their own effort in standing up what is called the Multinational Joint Task Force, where the four countries have contributed troops. I must say they have been a bit more even advanced than the JSN Sahel, which is in a way still work in, project, in progress. The MNJTF has actually been operational with support you know, from Force Balkan, which is deployed in the region, but also from EU in particular, but uh, partners such as US, uh, France, and the UK, which have provided bilateral support. Um, and then Nigeria's role there has to be acknowledged where the initial $100 million uh, was you know, uh, granted from Nigeria. Uh, so 
there is that uh, effort to, to deal with the, with the problem in the security sense, but for me, the most significant is the acknowledgement that the root causes of this phenomenon of violent extremism and uh, terrorism needs to be addressed. Hence, in the Le Chad Basin, you now have a regional stabilization strategy, which addresses uh, not just the security aspect, but the lead is also looking at how do we ensure that this objective of sustainable development, the SDGs, is actually part of the national program, decentralized to these regions where we are seeing high levels of poverty, uh, low Ill uh, literacy rate, lack of uh, health and other basic uh, facilities that need to be there. And um, now to give it a regional chapeau, we have recently seen the ECOWAS convene a summit on the 14th of September where West Africa as a whole, together with Sahel, and it's significant that for this summit, Cameroon, Chad, and Mauritania were invited. You know, as if to say, this is no longer a problem just uh, exclusive to uh, the Sahel countries, like Chad Basin countries. It's a problem that is uh, threatening even coastal states and countries like, you know, Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana and Togo and Benin are saying, we would like to join hands in tackling this phenomena and you know, in, in, in ensuring a truly regional approach in the fight against terrorism and violent extremism. What I understand you're saying is that the root causes, of course, are not terrorism and jihadism, but governance, poverty, lack of sustainability in development. But when I understood your interventions yesterday and the day before here at this conference correctly, you were basically saying the Europeans and the Americans should engage as strongly, and I understood militarily, as they do in Syria and Iraq. Is that your recommendation, actually? Well, some who would be probably less diplomatic will say that um, until the Libya problem is solved, what we are doing in West Africa and Sahel is maybe just putting a bandage on the wound, because they will, they will argue strongly that, uh, and in fact, some of the heads of state in the region often say, we told you to be careful about Libya, and you didn't listen. So perhaps as Colin Powell would say, you broke it, you fix it. And until Libya, frankly, mm -hmm. is you know, stabilized, that it's a capable state there, and doesn't become a uh, theater where all these groups have free reign and with a different support from, so that's the concern of Sahel and West African states. That yes, it's true that uh, if you look at governance issues and if you look at the uh, neglect of past governments, particularly military governments, in Nigeria it's not a, uh, a secret that most of the military governments were led by people from the north and who frankly did not do enough. You know, it shouldn't be the case that you go to Borno and literacy rate is less than 50%. That's not acceptable in, you know, today, that there, there are not enough schools, no, and you can repeat that of whether it's extreme north in Cameroon or in Chad and you know, um, in the areas of Burkina Faso where you're seeing this phenomenon. There are certain patterns that there was clearly, I mean, 60 years after independence, it shouldn't be that that level of poverty still persists. But it's the reality. And then, not to forget even the aspect of women, you know, that um, they're not being enrolled in school, the fertility rates are still too high, whether it's in Niger or, or Mali, uh, you know. So all these issues need to be dealt with, but we have to also understand that today, the groups that are fighting there are aligned to international terrorist groups of Al-Qaeda, of Islamic State, this uh, Islamic State West Africa province, claiming attacks in Niger, attacks that uh, led to 
killing of Americans in uh, northeast of N Nigeria, of Borno State, now saying that one of the factions of Boko Haram is fully aligned with Islamic State West Africa province. So there are those internal uh, factors with you know, governance issues that need to be dealt with, but our concern is also that these groups are aligned with international terrorist groups. And that's why we say that the same vigor with which these nefarious groups were, were taken on and defeated in Iraq, in Syria, we are not seeing that same fervor, that same vigor. And, but, but we need that on the part of the international community. Thank you. Thank you.